Good morning. And thank you to another Sunday school here at the Ark of the Covenant. We welcome you here today. Um, with today's lesson is Love Never Fails. Love Never Fails. And before we get started, I want to say a prayer. Um, Lord, we thank you, Lord, right now for this time you've given us, the space you've given us to learn of you. We ask, Lord, to bless us, Lord, today with, with your presence. Lord, open up our ear gates so they may hear the word, Lord, and have understanding, Lord. You said, with all you're getting, get understanding. So we ask, Lord, now for understanding, Lord. Let it sink into our hearts, Lord, that we may, the word may be written on our hearts, Lord, and we can recall it in a time of need. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, we'd like to start off with a uh, present-day illustration. Um, and the present day illustration uh, reads as such. And I'll be reading it. And then we're going to uh, uh, talk about some comments, some insights um, that I had as I read the uh, present day illustration. And maybe some, uh, we do have a Sunday school class here. We only got a couple of people here right now, but we're hoping that we get some input um, from our class today. Um, Alicia grabbed the toddler and look frantically about for his mother. I'll take him, Sister Alicia said, a teen, quickly rescuing the child. We're almost ready to start. I need everyone in their places, said Alicia. We are expecting our gospel radio station host to arrive any minute to do a live commercial. Alicia had agreed to be chairperson of the Fellowship Hall renovations for her church. It included a sizable up-to-date kitchen, a cozy dining area, a coffee bar, and a TV video game area. At times, some of the committee members had been less than loving in discussing the project details, arguing, and exchanging cutting words. However, Alicia had been patient, loving, and self-sacrificing, even volunteering to step down as chairperson if anyone wanted her to. That had helped calm the situation. Now she saw some of her once contentious committee members smiling and laughing with each other. Alicia knew the Lord was in this work. The dedication service was held in the newly renovated space. We are delighted with our new fellowship area and are obligated to Sister Alicia and her committee for this great undertaking, said Pastor Mitchell. It was important to renovate the fellowship hall because we want to better accommodate those souls we seek to reach, he continued. And the only way we will reach them is through love. Through love. Now I found the story interesting because um, it started off in a way that uh, I kind of didn't expect but nonetheless, um, it started off basically with her being kind of uh, fr frazzled. She was frantic, it says. She was under pressure. Uh, and we're gonna, sometimes we find ourselves under pressure when we, we want to do God's work. We want to do something for the Lord. We, we find ourselves under some kind of undue pressure. But we must realize that who we're doing it for, and because we're doing it for him out of love, that he's going to back us. He's going to be there for us. So one of the insights I had that she was under pressure, evident by Alicia's looking frantic for Tyler's mother. All right? We sometimes get frantic on our day-to-day -day dealings. How do we handle it? There's a question you need to ask yourself. How do we handle frantic situations, pressure situations? How do we handle it? The only way I know how to handle it is to rest in the Lord Amen. and to realize that uh, God is in control and if you're doing God's work you don't have to worry you don't have to panic you don't have to uh, uh, be frantic uh, like Alicia here but nonetheless she was frantic but we can get over that realize also in this in this this uh, present day illustration that Alicia stepped up to the plate she volunteered her time right uh, apparently nobody else wanted to do it, but she volunteered her time as chairperson uh, to coordinate um, 
the renovations um, for this hall that they were trying to build for the betterment of, uh, for the movement of God's uh, uh, work. So she stepped to the plate. She realized who she was working for and took on the challenge. Will you take on the challenge if God has it for you? He calls you for a purpose. Will you take on that challenge? God is calling you to take on the challenge and you to take on the challenge. He's, call, he's, call, he's calling all of us to take on the challenge that he has before us. Remember, remember we have a free will. He's given us a free will. So you have the option. You don't have to do it. But I would advise you from experience that you take on the challenge. And as the old saying we used to say, uh, uh, you can't lose with the stuff I use. All right? If, you, if you're in God and you using that word, rightfully dividing that word, you can't lose. Because love does not fail. It never fails. All right? Alicia retained the loyalty, remained loyal to the Lord, just like we need to be uh, remain loyal to the Lord, even in pressure situations, even when you feel people are coming against you. We see in the story where uh, her committee members all uh, were coming against her. They said, uh, uh, where does it say that? Um, they were arguing. Uh, they couldn't agree on anything it don't seem like so sometimes you're going to come against people that are disagreeable with you okay that doesn't mean that we stop or we panic but just stay the course stay the course God is with you just realize God is with you stay the course right remain loyal to the Lord so it says in here that Alicia was patient Loving, even though they were treating her that way, she was patient, loving, and self-sacrificing. Sometimes it takes sacrifice. Sometimes it takes sacrifice. Self-sacrifice. You may have to give up some, some finances. You may have to give up some time. Uh, some things that you may want to do, you may have to give that up. Sacrificing that for the, for the glory of God. And are we willing to do that? Got a young lady here, and she gave up her time today to be here with us. She was just walking down the street, she told me. Pastor pulled her aside and gave us some food out of love. And here she is today, hearing the word. I tell you, love will draw people. It will draw people in. Hate turns people away. So let's choose love over heat, all right? The Lord stepped into the situation. It says she knew the law was in this work. She knew the law was in this work, okay? Sometimes God is testing us to see if we are, we are committed to, this, to, the, to his cause. Sometimes he tests us to see if we're committed to his cause. And when he sees we're committed, he steps on in. And he does what needs to be done to glorify his name. And guess, guess what? You get a little bit too. Because it says at the end here, they thanked her. They thanked Sister Alicia and her, and her committee, the ones that was arguing. <clears throat> they even got some of the blessing. Because they came to their senses and started to agree on some of the things that she had before them. And <clears throat> it says uh, it was important to renovate the, the fellowship hall. Why was it important to, uh, to renovate the fellowship hall? Because we want to better accommodate those souls. See, they're doing the work of God. We seek to reach, he, con he continued, and, only, and the only way we will reach them is through love. So their work, their work is, uh, their, work, their work was a work of love. It might have looked common, but it's what they were doing. And they were doing it out of love. They were doing it out of love. And I can't say it enough. Sometimes you're going to come against uh, the enemy. You're going to come against things that, um, uh, that, that you feel may be 
uh, that are trying to stop you. Sometimes it's in your own mind, those things. And the word uh, opens up our mind and allows us to think clearly if we allow it to. All right. Amen. All right. Well, let's move on. We'll go right into the scripture. We're reading today from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, <clears throat> verses 1 through, uh, I think we're going to go all the way to 1 through 13. So chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. But I'm only going to be reading the first three verses right now in this section of, of scripture. And the title is, or the heading to this, to this portion of scripture is, Without Love. Nothing. Without love, nothing is the, is the title to this section of scripture in my Bible school lesson. And it reads, if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to worship or to hardship, excuse me, to hardship, that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. So you can see, you can do all these things. You can, you can man, they, they outline it perfectly. You can't get no better than that. You would think this person, if you didn't, if, if you didn't know better, you'd think this person was a saint. Um, but if he did that, uh, you know, not in love, maybe he had some other motive for doing it. If he had some other motive, then it profit him nothing. But if he did these things out of love, it says that he, he profits. He will profit from that. It is taken. God accepts that, that sacrifice or, or that uh, whatever you've done, all right? If you're a prophet, prophesy, but prophesy out of love. Not out of hate or out of motive maybe to get your way. Sometimes, you know, people uh, do things to uh, manipulate um, the congregates, okay? And we have to be careful that we, we don't fall into that trap. When we do something, we got to do it purely out of love because we're trying to uh, further the agenda of Christ. Not, we, not because we're trying to further our agenda. And sometimes our agenda looks like it's pushed to the front and God's agenda is pushed to the back. But let me tell you, you better push God's agenda to the front because what you are concocting is going to fail. It's going to fall. Because we're going to find out by reading some more of these verses. Even after prophecy is gone, and after faith is gone, and after tongues are gone, guess what remains? Love. Love will never die. It never fails. It's eternal. And we have to remember that as we go along here. So, love is above all. It is the driving force of our salvation. It was built on love, right? And we know God is love, right? And of everything we do, it is more important than speaking in tongues, prophecy, faith, giving everything you own, you possess, to the poor. That looks, that sounds like a real good thing, don't it? But if you're doing it uh, for another reason other than love, guess what? It didn't profit you a thing. Even giving yourself to, and I think in one version of the Bible it says, give yourself to be burned as a martyr it don't matter you just you just burn that's all so all these things that that we we're reading about here in this passage um we got to be careful that when we do these things if we do something if we choose to do some of these things that we do it out of love although i don't know nobody's going to give themselves to be burned but if you if you so happen to do that you better do it out of love <laughs> amen the only way spiritual gifts can be used effective, effectively is when Christians are motivated by love. That's the only way that we're going to be effective. All right? 
if we do things out of love, all right? Characteristics of Christian love, love is enriching, all right? By the use of spiritual gifts, tongues, prophecy, knowledge, faith, giving, we enrich the body, all right? Love is edifying. See, uh, show, we show edification by building up the church. We show edification because we, we want to edify the church. We must not think of ourselves but of others. When we put ourselves before uh, others, we kind of, kind of self-seeking, if you will. Um, the word is clear. I think in the last, last week class, you remember we talked about your neighbor? And it says, treat your neighbor as you would yourself. So if you love yourself, the Bible says you better love your neighbor. So if you think about it, there's, no, there's nobody you should not love. Even your enemies. I think there's, there's another, I think next Sunday school lesson is on loving your enemy. So, so we're going to stay clear of that for now. But you ought to love your enemy too. There you go. Agape love, she said. We're going to talk about that a little bit of just the four different types of love. All right. Anybody got anything they want to add to this in the class? We can give you the microphone and you can you can talk. All right. Well, he, he, he fed you physically, and now he's feeding you spiritually. He, he wanted you to get to the spiritual uh, food. But sometimes it starts off with giving somebody physical food. Amen? And that what does that do? They feel the love. It draws them in. And you know what? Now you got, you're getting some spiritual food that you can munch on and feed on and take with you and reuse it when it's needed. Amen. talking about that last week didn't we yeah present day illustration yep discernment having discernment be willing to see somebody in distress be willing and when you amen the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. Oh 
Oh my goodness. Amen. 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 Let me let me ask you this question. Let me ask this question. How? And I'll I'll, I'll wait. They trying to get the mics together. We have a little uh little issue with the mics, but as they do that. I'm going to pose this question to the class, and I'm going to pose it to you. If you want to put a comment, uh, if you're on Facebook and you're, and you're, you're watching uh, this live stream and you have a comment or you want to uh, uh, have a question, we ask that you put it in the comment and um, uh, perhaps we'll, 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 uh, we'll, we'll uh, address that question. All right, the, the question that I have right now is, how is the, world, the world's concept of love different from God's love? How is the world's concept of love different from God's love? Is it different? It is. Okay. I hear the audience, I, the congregants here are saying that, or Sunday school uh, students are saying it is. Definitely. There was a resounding yes. So how is it different? How is the concept of God's love different from the world's love? Yeah, you come on up. Uh, okay. Okay. Go ahead, uh, elaborate on that. Elaborate on that. Okay. So they're, they're trying to get the mic together. Perhaps you haven't heard that answer, but we do have another Sunday school student that's going to uh, speak on it. We're sorry about that. We, we have a little issue with our, uh, our technology. I but totally agree with it because God's love is unconditional. But with man, we kind of like put conditions on things. Well, if you do this, I'm going to do that. You know, and if you treat me this way, I'm going to cut you off or I'm not going to be bothering the thing. And, and thank God he don't do us that way, you know, mm -hmm. through his, you know, his grace and mercy cover all of that. Amen. And and his love, what did it say? Love covers a multitude of sins. Sin. It does. And so what she was saying about the conditions, that is so, so true. Because that's what I got to, you know, man put so many conditions on what they do for you, and also how they treat you. Amen. It's always a condition to it. But God, he overlooks all of our wrong and our sins and iniquities. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, the world often confuses lust and even perversion with love. Pure love, is, pure love is not given at the expense of others. It's not given at the expense of others. You can't sacrifice or abuse others and call it love. Worldly love gives with an expect, expectation to receive. However, God gives undeser, undeserved love through Christ. We don't deserve it, but he gives it to us anyway. We call it unmerited favor. He gives us unmerited favor. We did not earn nothing. He just gave it to us. And the reason why he gave it to us is because he loves us, right? Christ that is pure and peace, he gives undeserved love through Christ that is pure and peaceable. He loved us first, and he loved us sacrificially 
through Christ. All right? God so loved the world that he gave. He gave. All right? Going back to the lesson on, on um, what love is, that's the section and portion that I just read. I read sections, uh, actually I didn't read that section. I'm going to read that section now. Um, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7 now. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Uh-oh. That's a good one right there. We can, we can do a whole passage on that one. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Now that's a lot. And a lot of times we fall short, me included, sometimes we fall short of these things. And this is a good lesson because it reminds me of some of my shortcomings. And this is why we need to stay in the word so that we can recall all uh, those things um, uh, that we may be going through, right? And be able to rectify those things, bring us back into what? Good standing with, with God and also with the person that you may be having an issue with, right? Your neighbor. We talked about the neighbor last week, didn't we? That was the big thing about your neighbor. So, are we our brother's keeper? We sure are. So we need to pay attention to our brother's, our brother's needs. And sometimes we get so wrapped up in our own stuff. Am I right about it? Yes. It's, things are busy. Come on, we all busy. Yes. <laughs> now we in this COVID situation and we're, a lot of us are isolated and um, Frankly, we weren't about our own health, whether we we gonna make it. But you know what? We have a lot. We have a lot of healthcare workers that's out there, in the front line, putting themselves at risk. You know why they do it? They don't just do it for pay. Because I'll be frank with you, a lot of them are quitting because of the danger of of the risking their own life. So a lot of them are quitting, but some of them are staying because they realize the need. And they stand out of love. So whatever we do, we got to do it out of love. God glorifies that. And if there's anyone that's doing it just for money, guess what? God don't honor. You're just doing it. Okay? If, you know, God is with you. And that's what you have to realize. Even through a pandemic, God is with us. Amen? So we shouldn't be frightened. We shouldn't be scared off. If we're, if we're doing those things for the Lord, to glorify him, and we're doing those things out of love, which is today's love is, what well, today's left, love never fails. It never fails. So if you're doing it in love, just realize that you ain't gonna fail. It's just, you just can't. And why can't you fail? Because God is love. God is love. All right, so there's, there's different types of love. There's eros, or romantic love, filio, or friendship love, storage, or family love, I hope I pronounced that right, and agape, God's love for us, which is an exemplified in Christ's uh, sacrifice on the cross. All right, agape love. All what love is are expressed voluntarily without coercion and without compulsion. In other words, you got to do it on your own. It's voluntary. Love is not, nobody can't make you love. Nobody can't make you uh, uh, treat somebody right. You have to have a heart to want to do that. And when you have that heart, Guess what? You're working on the God's guidelines. 
you're working on the God's guidelines and you will never fail. So whatever your motive is, today if your motive is not underlined by love, you need to change your motive. Change your motive. Still do those good things, but change why you do it. Change why you do it. That's the difference. Changing why you do something. All right? What you do is important, but it has to be underlined on why you're doing it. Love is patient, it said, or long-suffering. Amen? And I think I heard somebody say that, somebody said that they give up quick, or they, they uh, as soon as something's happened, these young people, as soon as something happens, they leave them, boom, you I'm out, peace, and they out. I'm out. All right? That's not long-suffering. That's not love. If love, love takes some things sometimes. Sometimes you have to go through some hard situations. You have to come to some hard conclu conclusions. You have to uh, compromise sometimes. I mean, love is kind. You can't beat up on people and, and expect to get love back. You can't expect love if you if you unkind to somebody. You know, we, we talk to our ushers all the time. We're we lucky to have an usher here, to, one of the head ushers. Well, two of them. But uh, working the door when people come in. If you're not a kind person, that's not the job for you. <laughs> Greeting people to come in the door, that takes love. When they come in, you ought to greet them with a smile on your face. And not no phony smile, neither. You know, some people, they just got a certain way about them, you know? And you can, you can tell right away, they're just really glad to see you. They're sincere about it. <clears throat> There's no phony smile about it. They just truly are glad that you're here. Amen, class? So, kindness. Love is kind. You're showing, God, you're showing the love of God when you do those kinds of things. Just by being kind. That's all. It says, love uh, beareth all things. Oh. You know, Jesus beared all our iniquities on the cross. He beared all our iniquities, present or past, present and future. He beared them all. He beared all things. So we're going to go through some stuff that we have to bear. In the present day illustration, she had to go through some stuff with them arguing with her. Right? Disagreeing with her. But she stayed the course. She bared it. Because she realized the bigger picture was Christ. The love of Christ. And the end picture was the fact that this renovation was going to take place for the glory of God. So she had she kept the, the, uh, the goal in mind. The journey, she wasn't too much worried about the journey because she realized if she was doing out of love, God would get the journey straight. But she kept the goal in mind. So we need to keep the goal in mind. Whatever your ministry is, whatever God called you to do, whether you're an usher or whether you are a, 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 a praise uh, worker, you work in the altar, whether you're a minister, whether you're a deacon, whether you're in the financial office, you're doing it out of the glory of God. And it's hard to see sometimes. Sometimes we get so wrapped up into doing stuff, we don't see it. Like, I work the office sometimes and the finance, and you know, we did counting money, da da da. And you just think sometimes you get in this rut, you say, I'm just counting money, da da da. Well, there's more than that. You're handling God's money. And you have to be good stewards of that money. And you have to be honest. And if you ain't honest and you ain't a good steward, that, that ain't a job for you. Okay, so we all have a calling, and we 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 know. We, sometimes we know what our calling is, um, just by the way we lived our life, some of the work that we do in the world, um, uh, whatever. Uh, some of the things that we've been through. Um, some of the people that work the altar may have gone through a lot of things in their life, and guess what? They're so good at working the altar because they've been there, and we all been somewhere, by the way. We all been somewhere, not just the altar workers. So we all got a calling. We all got a ministry. 
But a lot of times I think we get scared and we get frightened uh, on our ministry and, and we, we don't uh, pursue it. And because we don't pursue it, um, um, we never know. We never know what we're capable of. And then when you do finally uh, de decide to pursue it, and it may be many years after you, you know, and you say, I could have done this a long time ago. I could have been way further. God could have really been blessing me. But you know what? It's never too late. Start today. Start today. You don't have to wait. Um, there's always, we always got new mercies every day. New blessings every day. That's the good thing about behind, being behind Christ. Amen? He always, we got to restart every day. So we mess up, we get rebooted. We talked about being rebooted, computer term. We get rebooted and we can start all over again. Everything are fresh, memories fresh, everything. And we can move forward. That's the message all itself. Have you been rebooted? <laughs> Amen. I ain't no preacher, y'all, but <laughs> I'm just a Sunday school teacher. But hey, you know, we never know if God uh, put it on me to preach something. I, I, I'm willing. Um, love always, uh, uh, love re rejoices in the truth. Love rejoices in the truth. You got to love truth. Got to love truth. The thing about the truth is this. <clears throat> you can put a spin on things. You can say whatever you want. And you can make it sound good to make it sound like it fits you. But if it ain't the truth, it ain't the truth. You can't, you can't mess up the truth. The truth is the truth. You could say whatever you want and make people believe it. Whatever's a lie is a lie. It ain't the truth. What does it say? The truth of what? Set you free. A lie ain't going to set you free. Sometimes a lie leads to another lie, which leads to another lie, which leads to another lie. Then you're so far out, you're looking hell in the face. So you got to be careful. You got to be careful. Tell the truth. The truth will set you free. Sometimes it's hard. I'm not saying all the time it's hard. It's easy to tell the truth, especially when you're trying to come back from a lie. When you're trying to come back from a lie, now you want to tell the truth. Sometimes people don't receive you. Sometimes people don't receive you because, um, because of the lie you may have told. So sometimes we lose credibility because of lies that we tell. You know, I think it's a story called a man cry wolf. He cried wolf, 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 and there was no wolf there. And then a wolf really was there, and he cried wolf. Man, ain't no wolf there. So, tell the truth. Be an honest person. Yes. Mm -hmm.
you still here. You still here. You still here. God love beareth all things. All things. That, all things. Not some things. Amen. Amen. I feel your pain. But you know, but just know God, God got you. God got you. He got this. This is a simple thing for God. It's simple. All you got to do is keep your hand in his hand. That's all you got to do. Isn't that an easy thing to do? No, just keep your hand in his hand. You know, you're doing it right now. You're doing it right now, whether you know it or not. Mm -hmm. You know what? It's always going to be that. It's always going to be people out there. So we have to, um, first of all, get ourselves together. Get ourselves together. And guess what? You could be a fisher for those people and not be, not be scared of them, but be a fisherman for them. So they don't, they're not pulling you no more. You're affecting them. They're giving, you're giving them some food. And guess what? They're coming in like you now and sitting down. Amen? You become a fisherman now, and not a fish. <laughs> okay? You was caught. No, uh, Pastor Nolan caught you. Uh huh. You, you didn't know that, but you was caught. Okay? He put, he put the bait out there, the food. You got the food, right? And he invited, literally. And then he brought you in and said, come on into the church. And now he's feeding you again. And now you're getting yourself together. And sometimes it's difficult because we've been through so much. And sometimes it takes a little bit to get to where we need to be. But keep coming and get it. Then you find yourself being a fisherman going out. And guess what? You're the best person to fish. You know why you're the best person to fish? Because you've been out there and you know what it's like to be out there. So when you see somebody, you, you, you're gonna, your, your spirit is going to line up with their spirit in terms of where they are. And you're gonna say, man, I remember I was like that. Let me go talk to them. And then you, could, you got something to say, because you can say, you know what, I've been there. A lot of people can't do that. A lot of people can't go out to the, and reach those people like that because they don't have the background or whatever to, to do that. Now, and it takes experience, not, not to say that you have to go through everything they went through, but what I'm saying is you, could do, you, can, go, you can use the word, but you're more effective because you've been there. And they, they tend to listen to people who have uh, uh, has been under the same kind of issues that they have been under. They tend to listen better than somebody where you've never been there. How you know? You know? Like, it, it's like somebody come up and, and you, let's say their father died and your father's still living. Oh, I know how you feel. No, you don't know how I feel. Your daddy's still living. How you know how I feel? Until your daddy died, you may not know how that person feels. You may have an idea. And I'm here to tell you, because I lost my mother and my father and my sister and my wife. All right? So I know how I feel. So I can talk to people about that. And guess what? They listen. You can make it through that. You can make through that unscathed. Unscathed. Do you miss them? Yes. Certainly. Are you going to miss them probably for a long time? Certainly. But that shouldn't do you in. Remember, we... Uh, they're in a better place. God got them, and God got you. So don't, don't worry so much about them. Just think of them being in a better place. Amen? Anybody got any comments they want to share or they want to say or anything? Quiet class today? About the, the, the part about truth. Mm -hmm. um, years ago when I was a young kid, it was a show on, and this guy was speaking about he lost his family, he lost his business, and he lost all of his friends because he was a habitual liar. <laughs> and the thing he said, he said he lied so much he couldn't remember what lie he told the who. <laughs> you know, because he, yeah, because, you know, when you kept saying you tell a lie to cover that lie, yeah, you tell yeah. another lie to yep. cover that lie. Yep. And, the, and he, the, the point that I got out of that was if you tell the truth, mm -hmm. you don't have to think about it. Exactly. A lie, you have to exactly. figure out what lie you told the who. Right. 
what you know say well did i tell this it. yeah mm -hmm. and that's 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 a burden to me that would would have been a burden that's but that man he it was so profound because he said if you tell the truth that's something you don't have to think about mm -hmm. But when you lie, you like you say, it, one lie gonna lead to another lie, and then this lie lead to another one, and then, like he said, the man said he lost his business, he lost his family, oh and all his friends. He said none, nobody wanted nothing to do with him, because he lied so much, you know. And it's like you know what, he got to the point where he, you know, he said he finally realized all that he had done, and he went back and asked for forgiveness. They forgave him, but they still had, you know, as you were saying that unconditional love that God has, but they were still kind of looking at him. He was saying that they f said they forgave him, he said, but they still kind of like had them little walls and stuff up, you know, because they knew his character. Right. And you know, that's a bad thing to take with you as, as, as being Elijah, because anything come out your mouth, ain't nobody gonna believe you, nobody whether it be a truth or not. No. And that's a bad place to be in, but you know, just the fact that it is easier just telling the truth, and whether it's good or bad, mm -hmm results from it, mm -hmm. the truth is much better. It's much better. Yeah, you don't have to remember anything. People trust right. you, people believe you. There's a lot of positives to, <coughs> to telling the truth and a lot of negatives to not telling the truth. You know, some people are so good at it though. <laughs> some people are so good at it. Um, they know how to put just a slight spin on it sometimes. Yeah. And, and the, pers the person that can really do it well is the person that mixes truth with lies. Right. It's very deceptive, and it's very uh, overt. It's under the covers. You, you you don't see it coming, and sometimes it's very subtle that you miss it. So, so yes. Discernment is Discernment. very important. Yes. Right. Okay. You have to know. I can't explain that. I just know that discernment. Yes. You have. That's the only way you're gonna know. Now, how do you how do you get discernment? How? Uh, How does discernment come? You can feel does, it. Does it just come, or is it something that you have to pray for? What? What is? That's, a very, that? That's a very good question. That's a very good question, but it but, hit it hit me at ten, age ten. Okay. Could it be being sensitive to the word? Hmm. Could it be being sensitive to the word? So as you read the word, you're more sensitive to the spirit. You're more sensitive to things that are out of order hmm that's it so then when you walking down the street you see something out of order that's just oh i discern that that's not lining up with what god right is right 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 that part you like that part i love that part okay. <laughs> that's exactly how i used to be <laughs> and i still am it <laughs> lines can, up it does because line up. it lines up <laughs> it doesn't line up i should say because it doesn't line up you right. know right that something should be done now are you willing to do it that that part action. That's the that's the second part of it. Oh, you can discern all day long. I see he ain't, Very doing, true. He ain't doing that. Just keep on moving. Right. We talked about I think last last Sunday we talked about the the Good Samaritan, mm -hmm. right? The priest and Levites saw the man. They discerned that the man was hurting. They discerned that the man was beat up. Mm -hmm. And what they do? They went to the other side. They went out of the way. They went to the other side of the street, and left him there. Now this is a person that's supposed to be known for love. Lord have mercy. And the right. good Samaritan, which is not a hero, which is usually the person that's supposed to be the bad person, Samaritan, Samaritans didn't have dealings with Jews. Mm -hmm. He stopped and used his finances and everything to get this man back to help. Mm -hmm. So much so they left some money with the innkeeper to keep this man until he was okay. Amen. He said he would come back and pay him if he needed more money. Who does that? <laughs> so the story here, um, talking about trusting and loving yep. God always trusts and I, my time is getting short so I got to move on a little bit <laughs> love always trusts love always hopes faith is built on hope faith is built on hope Hebrews 11 1 says now faith is the substance or the realization of things hoped for the evidence or conviction of things not seen Amen? Amen. Love always hopes. Love always preserves. Matthew 5.13. We are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden under foot of men. Salt can preserve. 
right? And can uh, serve as a preservative against the evils of society. All right? When God's servants are taken out of this world through the, through the rapture, there will be nothing holding the evil one back. The salt is going to be taken out of the world. Can you imagine that? Nothing to preserve it. Also, we can look at it as salt also creates a thirst. Right? It, salt creates a thirst uh, for greater information. So salt can be looked at in a couple of ways in that passage. Amen? And I'm going to move on because, like I said, we're running low on time. What love is not? Love is not boastful. Love is not proud. Love does not dishonor others. Love doesn't bring that some down, bring others down to build themselves up. All right? Love is not self-seeking. Love is not easily angered or not easily provoked. Love does not keep records of wrongs. <laughs> Love does not keep records of wrongs. You ever been with a with a partner or a friend, they they bring up something that happened <laughs> 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I'm guilty of that sometimes, I got to admit. Sometimes I'm guilty. I think we all might be a little guilty of that. We may forgive, but a lot of times we don't forget. And we got to learn, we got to learn how, to, I think that's a learned skill. You got to learn how to do that, how to forget those things that are behind. And press what? Towards the mark of the prize of the high calling. And I think sometimes we get wrapped up into keeping records so we can get them. Like when they, and, and I think some would go as far as say, you know what, I'm going to keep that. I'm, they do something, they say, I'm going to hold this one. So when they come at me, I got them. I think we, they're going to bring this back to the remembrance. <laughs> reboot, reboot. Reboot, reboot. We need a reboot here. All I can say is, thank God that God doesn't keep a record. Amen. He doesn't keep a record. Thank God he doesn't. Because if he did, uh, it'd be a long laundry list for me. And he'd be still talking right now. And I couldn't even get a word in because he'd be, it'd be so much stuff that I couldn't even, I couldn't even stop him. I'd just get on the line and say, go to hell. Because <laughs> I know I'm messed up. But thank God he don't keep, but thank God he don't keep, he don't keep records. So I'm saved and sanctified right. through the blood. Right. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Lord doesn't delight in evil. He don't like to see evil done, uh, done especially to his people. And sometimes he works when, when we don't even know he's working. We don't know that the enemy is trying to get at us, but God has put something in the way so the enemy can't get at you. We, we're oblivious to what's going on. But because God is the, the, the kind of God he is, he watches our back even when we don't even know we're in danger. That's why a lot of times we say thank God for the seen and the unseen. Because a lot of times we don't see what's coming or what would have happened. Um, so we thank God for that. So he don't delight in evil. Love never fails. 1 Corinthians 8, 13, 8. 13. This is the last portion and we, we're done. Um, and it reads 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through 13. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there, are, where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, <clears throat> I put the ways of children behind me. For now we see only a reflection, as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part that I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. So prophecies is going to pass away. Tongues pass away. But they say love is eternal. 
It'll last forever. And we got to remember that. It'll last forever. Um, we are saved by faith. We need to hope. We need hope to get through life. But love binds everything together. When everything go, when everything else is gone, love will remain. Now, Pastor just walked in. For those who want to know, when everything else is gone, love will remain. So that's 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 good to know. God is love. First John, four, uh, chapter four, verses seven and eight. Dear friends, let us love one another. And I'll close on this. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. Why? Because God is love. And so we hope you got something out of the message today. We're going to end our Sunday school uh, on that note. <coughs> if, you don't, if you don't remember nothing else, remember God is love. And he loves you. We'll see you next time.